What is up, my brothers? Thank you so much for joining me on episode number two of God Waits in Fatherhood. I am very thankful for you guys to join me on this journey of talking God, talking the gym, talking weights, talking physicality, and building a better physique, and also, of course, developing ourselves as fathers and or future fathers so that all around we are on this self-development journey together and I am blessed to be in the position to give my experiences on things and also um, be able to put this content out to the world and hopefully help some of you. So thank you so much for joining. What we are going to cover today um, is we are going to go through a Bible verse that I picked out for the day. Um, we are going to talk about rest days and why they are important and how to work them into your schedule. Um, and also we are going to talk about daddy daughter time. So with these three topics, I'm going to jump right in and get started. Forgive me. I am using a new microphone. I did have a little bit of issues in the last episode with some static. Um, I am working on getting a better one. I had went on Amazon and got one that was maybe probably not up to par with the quality that I'd like. So um, if at any point during this um, podcast, it starts going off, you know, sorry, I'm trying to fix some of that stuff, but let's get started. So I want to start today with a verse from Matthew 7 and what it is, I'll read it out loud for you guys. So Matthew 7, um, it is keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for keep on seeking and you will find keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you for everyone who asks receives everyone who seeks finds and to everyone who knocks the door will be open now why I picked that for this particular day, um, you know, guys, one of the toughest parts of being a man is when we are down and out, we are stubborn. We, we don't want to reach out for help. We don't want to seek. We want to figure things out ourselves because we're stubborn. That's how us men are, and God designed us that way for a reason. Now, when we get backed into a wall, we get backed into a place of where we, we need help and we don't want to look, there's multiple avenues that we can take. And, you know, the route that has taken me to where I am today was when I got backed into a corner, I seeked. And I looked for God. And when I found him, he has been able to bless my life and absolutely develop me and change who I am as a person. So, you know, I want you guys to know, like for me and my personal experience, um, you know, I was extremely down and out. I, um, you know, my, my wife, uh, we've been together for 10 years. We were going through some marriage troubles, as any couple does. You, you go through marriage troubles when you've been together for 10 years. Um, you know, and I almost lost my marriage. There was a point in time where things were very, very low. Um, things weren't looking good. We, we honestly, we didn't know what the future forsake for us. We didn't. And I was backed into this corner and I just felt so small. And I could remember, I could remember taking a shower and I hadn't cried in years. And I remember taking a shower and just simply, I literally just fell to the floor and bawled my eyes out for probably 30 minutes. And I was so beat down from the troubles and, you know, I, I wanted everything to work and to be fine for our children, for our family that we had built together. When you've been with someone for 10 years, you've built trust. And, you know, I just broke down and i fell to the floor and i bawled my eyes out and i could remember 
I had actually watched a video and came across a video on Instagram Reels, and the the video was 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 exactly this verse, and it was him reading specifically the part "Seek and you shall find," or "Keep on seeking and you will find." And I remember crying on the floor in the shower, and for some reason that Instagram reel popped in my head, and I just started begging God. I, you know, a little bit of background on me. I wasn't very religious before the, if you haven't seen my testimony, I wasn't truly religious before the marriage troubles. I believed a little bit. I used to be atheist, very, very anti anything. Um, but up until the marriage troubles, I, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a full believer. I was half one foot in one foot out. Right. And I'm crying. The Instagram reel comes across my head and I just start begging God for help and for guidance and to show me and set me on the right path and to help my problems to fix my relationship, to develop me, to better me. I was just asking him for strength. And I cried my eyes out, turned off the shower. You know, I ended up having to go to work. So I went to work and nothing happened that day. Um, it, it, it really wasn't until a couple weeks later and now during those couple of weeks, I was seeking. Uh, I started praying to God more. I started asking God for guidance. I was asking him for strength. I was asking him for just to keep my family together while we figure these problems out. Um, <clears throat> sorry, it's a little hard for me to talk about this, but, and it was in every single day thing of me seeking and seeking and seeking this god help me please guide me um and i started becoming thankful for what i do have so i was counting my blessings to god i was repenting my sins and i was asking him for guidance and help every single day <clears throat> and i remember weeks later I remember sitting at my desk at work <clears throat> and I just so happened to be um I just so happened to be I was, I was on Google and I was just reading other people's marriage problems and um you know I wanted to see what what other people were going through and how they made it through to help me. So again, I was seeking and I'll never forget, I was on an article where they were older. They had had a, they had had a little bit of a, um, I think they were in their 40s or something like that. It was a husband, wife, and they were having some issues and they didn't know if they were going to make it. And you know, the wife wanted to do this, the husband wanted to do this. They were in two separate paths. And um, I remember in the article, the, because. Um, they, it was basically like one where they submit their scenario and their question, and then they ask, you know, the person who actually wrote the article was like a marriage therapist, and the marriage therapist responds to their, um, uh, to their scenario, right, and says, this is how you should go about it. And <clears throat> basically what she said was, you know, there are, God puts us down in, you know, in, 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 in times of our lives, God puts us down and out and through trials and tribulations to develop us. And, you know, there are, there, when you come to the, sorry, it's hard for me to articulate this. I want to make sure it's said properly. Basically, when you get to a certain point in your life and there is a fear of becoming who you truly want to become. And this is a stage where God truly tests if you want to really become that individual. 
I always wanted to be a man of God. I always wanted to be a exceptional husband, a amazing father, a true man of God, a true follower. I, I always wanted that and I always feared it. And I'm reading this article and the marriage therapist is saying how, you know, oftentimes we fear who we truly want to become. And this is God's way of, as I said, testing you to see if you truly want to become that person or not. So he puts you down a path in which it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. It's going to develop you. It's going to grow you. If on the other end, when the time comes, you make the decision to become that man who you truly want to be. I'm reading this article and I felt, I just felt a massive sense of relief. And when I say, a ma I, I almost started, I almost started crying at work when I was reading this. and. As I'm sitting there, just, oh my gosh, I have, I've always feared who I want to become. Why? I don't know. And I started, I just felt this massive relief of, whew, this is what I needed to read. This is, this was God. This was God telling me, I'm ready to take that leap into becoming that man that I've always wanted. And that's what was holding me back. That's what was causing the marriage troubles. That's what was causing all of the hard times that I was going through was because I was scared to become that man. I was scared to become that godly man. I was scared to become that exceptional husband. I was scared to become that exceptional father because, because why? Because if I try and I fail, That's what God put me down. And if you're in a similar situation right now where you're scared to become who you truly want to be, there's something holding you back. Fear, motive, something is holding you back from becoming who you truly want to be. My friend, it's time that you start seeking. Start seeking. Start asking God for guidance and for how to become that man you've always wanted to if you've always wanted to be the superhero dad and you've always wanted to be muscular and you want to be have a better relationship with your wife have a better relationship with your kids if you truly want that now is the time to start seeking help from god for him to show you the way and i can tell you ever since everything in my life has 10x my kids my relationship with them, my wife, my relationship with her, my overall thoughts on what we are in as an existence have 10 x because I started seeking. And when I started seeking, right, as it says, I'll go back to it, as it says in the verse, word for word, I will read it again. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. So I'm going to close this Bible time out with when you seek, you will find. When you find, knock on that door, my friend. It will open a beautiful, beautiful world for you. And it'll show, it'll be everything that you've ever wanted. You have to start with seeking. So I hope that you guys got value out of today's Bible lesson for the day. I am now going to move on to weights. So <clears throat> I, um, you know, thank you guys again. And, and comment below what, comment below what your, um, you know, if you're open to your struggles and how God has helped you, I would love for the comment section to just be there of an abundance of, you know, struggle to result of, uh, to, to great result from God. I would love for the comment section to just 
just be a very positive one where we can read through it, hear other men's experiences and how God helped them. So comment below, you know, let me know what you think of my um, story, but let's talk rest days now and why they are so important, how you can incorporate them to still spend time with your family, still get the games that you want, and of course, um, yeah, I, I totally drew a blank right there for a second, but I guess that's part of starting a brand new podcast. Sometimes you forget what you're going to say. <laughs> but um, I, today was my rest day, so I normally take a second. I normally take three uh, rest days per week. Um, there are times where I do jujitsu. Um, so, you know, technically sometimes I don't get three rest days. But from weightlifting itself, I always try to give myself three rest days. And I used to, I'll tell you right now, I used to train six, seven days a week. I did that for years, 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 years. And, you know, number one thing that I noticed was my energy was actually lower. Um, you know, cause I was training hard, intense, heavy, like a savage six, seven days a week. And, you know, could I continue to do that? Um, sure. I'm young enough. I can still do that. But overall, it just didn't make sense for my lifestyle and what I had going on. And it was draining my, it was great at that point. It was just draining my energy because I was just going so ham all the time. And I know we all like to think we're David Goggins, but some of us are not David Hawkins, and that's okay. <laughs> so shout out to that man for being the savage that he is. But, um, you know, implementation of rest days is, you know, number one, you have to understand what's your recovery, right? H how is your recovery genetically? Are you, are you blessed with recovery to where, you know, if you work out in the, the next day, are you even sore? Are you eating enough food? Are you eating the right kind of food? Are you sleeping okay? You know, there's a lot of variables that go into how many rest days you truly need, but three has been what I found effective for the, myself and the majority of my clients. Um, reason being because it's a perfect, ba it's, it's a great balance of four weight training days a week. You'll be able to hit everything that you need within those four days and the workouts will be quick. Now, sometimes what happens if you go down to three training days per week, Sometimes you have to fit in so many exercises that these workouts actually end up being a little bit longer. So I feel like spreading it out to four days in the week and these only being, you know, four 45 minute to hour workouts has been much easier to stick to than, you know, doing obviously five or six, but obviously even going down and doing three, because sometimes three, you have to do hour half workouts and, you know, with timing, you might not have that much time. Um, <clears throat> But overall, when it comes to taking three rest days per week, it's been a perfect balance of, you know, that gives me two extra days because I, I, I take off Sunday, but I do work out Saturday morning. So I take two rest days during the middle of the week. So Monday through Friday, I take two rest days. And during these rest days, I get to uh, go with my kids to take them to school. I get to spend a little extra time with my wife. I get to work on topics that, you know, I get to work on work. Like when I come up with podcast ideas, content, et cetera, I get extra work done. So it helps my lifestyle in that way, but also it helps me allow uh, more family time, recovery overall. That's been what I've found to be the most effective thing for me specifically is three days per week. Now I take off Sundays and I also fast on Sundays too. Um, <clears throat> I, I eat a dinner on Sunday, but I go from Saturday evening. So my dinner on Saturday until Sunday night, I go without eating. Sometimes I'll maybe just have fruit. Sometimes I'll maybe just have a little bit of honey, but I really try to keep my calories below like 200 on Sunday up until dinner. Now, why do I do that? I've also just felt that, you know, I want to give my body a little bit of a break. So I try to eat no food. Once you put food in your system, your body actually isn't taking a break. It needs to fast to clean itself out. It's your liver and your kidneys are they need to do their job and they can only do their job when there's no food. So that's why I take Sunday to really help clean me out. The only reason why I might have some fruit or some honey, which, you know, kind of negates the cleaning out part, but um, I'll have that just so that if I have a lot of work done uh, or if I like, you know, around 12 to two o'clock, some right around there, sometimes I'm just, I've been going so hard at the stuff that I have to get done 
that, you know, I just need a little bit of fuel in my mind to like ride at that point. So, um, but rest day on Sunday with the fast has been amazing. Taking two rest days during the week is a lot of extra time for my kids, extra recovery. Because here's the thing, when you break down a muscle, <clears throat> everybody, everybody like <clears throat> gains are made in the kitchen is what everybody always says. And gains are made, you know, you go to the gym and you break your muscles down and then gains are made in the kitchen. Very true. But the, the real truth is gains are made while you sleep. So because sleep is the only time that you actually truly recover. When you're eating, you're not recovering. You're not, you're awake. When you're sleeping, that's when your body is actually taking those calories and building matter with it and growing. That is when you're losing fat. That is, that is sleep is quite literally everything when it comes to the, 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 the final product, right? Of what you want. The sleep has to be there. Now, <clears throat> three rest days allows for your body to have extra nights of sleep without extra amounts of stress. Right, because if I'm training six days a week, well, then I'm only getting one night's sleep during that week where I didn't train something that day. So my body is overloaded with so much work that it has to do to recover the muscles that I've broken down in the beating I put my body through that it can hinder your progress. It can, like I said, there's a couple genetic variables, variables of your diet, et cetera, et cetera. But for the most part, most of us, it hinders us. Now, in taking three days, you now have three extra nights of sleep where you, you don't have excess wear and tear from that specific day on your body. So your body can actually heal everything that it has been breaking down and it can overcompensate that level of healing for growth and muscle tissue, right? Because the goal is to break, you know, think about it like this. If you're digging a ditch, right? And let's say you dig a three foot ditch. That's you working out. You working out is digging the ditch three feet deep. You eating would be then grabbing all of that dirt, right? And now you're going to try to take that dirt and shove it back into the ditch. Now sleeping is actually taking said dirt, shoving it into the ditch and then by if you were to say overcompensate and get muscle growth out of it filling the ditch up with more dirt than what once was there right so if you dig a ditch down this is the this is the ground dig a ditch three feet deep right you eat your food and you gather you're gathering your food and you're gathering all the dirt to shove back in here sleep you actually take the dirt and you put it back and then overcompensating for muscle growth would be the dirt actually then being more than what was once in there. And that's how you build a muscle. And you dig it down, and you go up, and then you dig it down, and then you go up, and then you dig it down, and then eventually the muscle grows and grows and grows and grows. Basic analogy for how it all works. So <clears throat> I've found three days a week has been the most optimal for my clients, for myself. Um, you know, of course, certain instances call for others, and some people like more. Everybody's different. At the end of the day, the greatest training program in the world is the one that you'll stick to. The greatest diet plan in the world is the one that you'll stick to. That is all that matters, but that's what I found to be best for me. So <clears throat> that was why I took a rest day today. Um, I did hurt my, I kind of hurt my Achilles. Um, I, it was hurting the other day. I trained calves really hard and I did the, I did the full, I'm trying to grow my calves. And I did the full stack on calves. And I got like eight, eight or 10 reps or something like that. And I woke up the next morning and I was, I was pretty sore. Um, and then I woke up today and I was like, Ooh, like I'm, I'm like really sore and I can't even really walk on my right calf properly. Cause my, my, something's wrong with my Achilles. I get hurt. Um, I'm thinking I like, you know, I guess old man, dad stuff. I think I took a step wrong and you know, I don't, I don't know exactly how I stepped, what I did, but I tweaked my Achilles and it, it, it hurts right now. So, um, I definitely needed a rest day today to just make sure my body is able to overcompensate and heal that 
injury because I do not want that to get worse. I'm in jiu-jitsu. Your Achilles is very important for jiu-jitsu. Also, I'm trying to grow my calves, so the last thing that I want is to hurt my freaking Achilles, right? Because then I, then I won't be able to train calves at all. So um, that's another reason why I took a rest day. And guys, you also have to understand, like, you have to listen to your body sometimes. You know, if your program calls, if the program calls for chest day and you wake up and you're having shoulder pain, like bad, like not in a good way, not your sore, right? Soreness is one thing. You can beat soreness. But if you actually have shoulder pain and you're like, ooh, this is like, I, 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 you slept wrong on it and it hurts. Sometimes you got to listen to your body and you got to either train something else. So if you can train legs, go train legs. Or if you need to train back, go train back. But sometimes you got to work around things, work around injuries. And, you know, for me, I had just trained, I had just trained chest and tries and I just trained back the day before. So I was literally like, I can't really go and do anything besides arms, but I'm supposed to hit arms with a buddy tomorrow. So I was like, well, I just take today off rather than doing legs because um, my Achilles. But overall, it's important to, you know, summarize everything. Um, Get your rest days in. Find how many works best for you in your lifestyle. Fit them in um, so that you can recover, grow optimally. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about in today's podcast, um, and also before I get on to the last thing too, I should say, comment down below, how many rest days do you take and what is your split? I'm curious what some of your guys' split is. But <clears throat> I want to talk about... Something very important to me, now that my daughter's getting a little older, she's coming up on two years old. So um, daddy-daughter time and how important it is for that. So, you know, one thing that I'm going to start doing when she turns two, I'm slowly implementing it now, but she's she's really closer to one and a half, so she's still very, very, very young but I'm, I'm trying um, is I want to act like I'm giving her dates. Now, why do I want, why do I want to act like I'm taking my daughter out on a date? Now I'll tell you why you want to act like you're taking your daughter out on a date because your daughter, you know, we've always heard the name, the term, you know, daddy issues and stuff like that. I mean, that, there's truth in that statement. There's truth in daddy issues because women, when they grow up, from, from the time that they're children until the time that they grow up, when they watch their dad, that father or that father figure that they have in their life, that's the man that they subconsciously go for when they find their love and who they want to spend the rest of their life with. And, you know, it, it, it's obviously hard to think that far ahead and go, oh my gosh, I have to think about my daughter ending up with a man. She's two, she's three, she's five, she's 10. Well, the reality is it's gonna happen. The reality is, is one day your daughter will not have your last name. The reality is one day your daughter will have another man's last name. And in order for her to be prepared to find that right man, it's up to you to show her what kind of man you need to be. And here's what I've been trying to implement because again, my daughter's so young. But what I'm trying to implement, and I'll be sharing my experiences over the years with you, is how it's working. You know, I mean, she's so young still; it's one of these things. But um, is acting like I'm taking her on dates, little tea parties, um, playing with her, um, being a good, good man to her, and showing her how a man should be. You know, my plan is when she's, you know, a little bit older, closer to being able to talk and understand comprehensively what we're doing, going to certain places, because now she's just mama, dada, babies, babas, playtime, mini tea parties, that's it. There's nothing much more substance than that. So I'm gonna stick to that for now. But I'm gonna work my way into, excuse me, I'm gonna work my way into taking her out on full-blown dates, taking her out to a nice dinner, taking her out to a place that she wants to go and giving her a very special time and treating her how a man should be. This daddy-daughter time is so important for not only you and your relationship with your daughter, but for her as well. Because as I said, this is you're going to show her what sort of man she should look for when she wants to get married one day. And if you can be this absolute superhero of a dad, right, who not only is physically there, mentally there, spiritually there, 
and you can show her this man, this level of man. When she meets the deadbeat at 16 years old, who, you know, is, uh, you know, we all, we can all, I don't need to go much further. We can all picture who we don't want our daughter to end up with, right? When she meets that guy, she's going to go, I don't want no part of you, right? Because she's going to look for the level of man that you want. So when she comes home with the kid that you, you want, and you're like, yeah, here we go. You're going to be able to look at him and go, oh, he's a good kid, right? You're going to, you're going to respect him. You're going to, you're going to respect him much more than the deadbeat. And the deadbeat is only brought home when you don't show her who to look for in a man. The good kid who we want her to end up with is us done a good job raising her to find that right good kid. Now, um, um, there are, <clears throat> I've seen multiple people do this too. And I, I, I all started this mainly because, um, I heard, um, oh, I should probably turn that off real quick. Let me turn that off real quick. That's my timer. Um, you know, I saw, <clears throat> I had saw Tom Brady did this. I had saw Steve Weatherford did this. Some people that I idolize and look up to, I was like, ah, I'm going to start, I'm going to start implementing this. So this idea, uh, you know, is not just from my head. This is from very successful people who I look up to, aspire to, and I figured I would take their information, give it a shot for myself, let you guys know about it and what I am doing to um, just have better, better time with my daughter so that she can find the man that we, we want her to end up with. And of course, at the end of the day, she'll be a grown adult. It'll be up to her and who she wants to be with. But ideally, if I showed her how, or if I showed her what a good man is, she'll find that man one day on her own. And so closing off this podcast today um you know i hope i did much better than the last one the last one was the first episode it was a little rocky with things um so i hope the microphone was good this whole time around and i hope you guys got a lot of value out of today's podcast comment below um you know what topics you guys want me to talk about in the future not only that tell me about how you spend time with your daughter or if you have a son Tell me how you spend time with your son, because at the end of the day, you know, you have to show and be, you have to lead by example to your son as well. So talk to me in the comments, tell me what you guys are doing for that. And of course, if you guys would like to work with me one-on-one -on -one, um, to get you to your physical goals, spiritual goals, mental goals, the application will be down in the description below where you can apply to work with me one-on-one -on -one, and I will help you level if you have any questions for me, anything, guys, you can comment down below. Again, thank you so much for watching today's podcast. I much appreciate you. God, guns, and fatherhood. Have a great rest of your day.